Well, geometry informs uh, how we understand the world. As we navigate the environment around us, we solve geometry problems without even thinking about it. We figure out which side of a coffee cup will hold liquid, the best way to grasp a door handle, and we navigate around furniture. So given that geometry is so ubiquitous, it really comes as no surprise that the demand for software to understand shape is ever increasing. Autonomous driving uses geometric reasoning to detect cars, pedestrians, cyclists, and obstacles on the road. Computer animation brings characters to life by bending and stretching the shapes of their bodies. And computer-aided design captures the geometry of objects that can be manufactured using 3D printers. These applications suggest a fundamental question. How do we help computers understand shapes as well as we do? Thinking back to the last time many of us solved geometry problems, we might think to look at high school math for some help. Now, elementary geometry provides a beautiful lens through which we can begin to understand what makes a shape unique. But there's only one problem. The shapes that we encounter in real life aren't just triangles, circles, and platonic solids. A second problem confounds our situation even more. Consider an application of geometry to medical imaging. Given the shape of a person's brain from an MRI, can we identify which folds belong to which functional areas? This problem has one foot in geometry, since we're working with the shape of a brain, and another in data. Experts know which fold is which thanks to centuries of experimentation and study. A professional can parcelate a brain because they've studied anatomy and they've seen similar labels on other subjects. This reasoning goes beyond just mathematical theory and into the realm of messy data. As with other disciplines, the complexity of 3D shape analysis suggests that we might turn our attention to data-driven approaches that amplify computers' understanding of shape. To that end, I thought I'd share some lessons that we've learned engineering systems that couple geometric reasoning with modern AI. On the path to teaching computers about geometry, the first question one might ask is whether we can just drop basic machine learning algorithms into our applications. The majority of machine learning research considers a few basic modalities, like images, like the photographs collected by your phone, text, like the content of articles on the internet, and general data points, like survey responses or market prices. These modalities have a few properties in common. First, we have agreed upon means of representing these types of data. We can store images uh, using pixel colors and general data in tabular form. Second, there's a lot of it. By one estimate, 1.72 trillion photos were taken worldwide in 2022. And Wikipedia alone contains over 6 million articles and 4.3 billion words. Third, this data is structured. Text comes one line at a time, and images are stored on grids. Geometry falls outside of these basic categories. There's no consensus on the best way to store a shape on a computer. And moreover, there's a paucity of clean geometric data. The situation hasn't stopped our community from applying standard AI tools to shapes. For example, in early work, colleagues at the University of Massachusetts took virtual snapshots of 3D shapes, converting them to images that could be provided as input to two-dimensional two computer vision. Tools like this are shockingly effective, even though we pretty much lose all the geometric structure in the problem. So the question remains, can we engineer machine learning algorithms built from the ground up for shape? Let's dig into some of the questions we have to answer to tackle this problem. First, we have to agree on a way to represent a shape. In autonomous driving, the most popular representation of geometry is using what we call a point cloud, which is basically a list of points that are messily scattered in 3D space. This is the best way that shape usually is sensed by LiDAR sensors that are built into self-driving cars. Computer graphics applications prefer meshes, or networks of tiny triangles that are all linked together. Mesh surfaces capture the smooth and detailed shapes of artist design characters. And then in computer-aided design, we often prefer to work with big, smooth patches that are easily modeled by an engineer and can be manufactured without facets. Specialized machine learning systems are needed to ingest and output these types of shapes. Think of a system that inputs a point cloud just as a long list of XYZ coordinates. Even in this setting, we have a number of demands. If we reorder our list, the shape didn't change, so our model should be invariant to permutation. Moreover, different point clouds can have different numbers of points, which prevents us from using models whose input has a fixed size. Even after we settle on a shape representation and find a way to input a shape, next we must map that shape to a meaningful output. 
As we saw earlier, one option is to adapt successful methods intended for other types of data, such as convolutional neural networks for images. But we can also devise specialized models for shape. For example, one model designed by my former PhD student, Yue Wang, passes information around between nearby points on a shape. And as information flows between these points, the model kind of comes to a consensus. Another technique tends to draw information and uh, inspiration from physical analogies. We could simulate just hitting a shape with a hammer and use the sound that it makes, mathematically, its vibration frequencies to label the shape. Alternatively, we could use models of heat diffusion to spread information around along a surface. Finally, we have to choose a data set. Some application areas are rife with 3D data. For example, Waymo has shared 3D point clouds that are gathered from the roads around vehicles, which provides a means of training models for object detection. Academic teams have also gathered repositories from virtual reality and design applications. The current scale of data sets in geometry, however, is so much smaller than, say, images and text, but the size grows by the day. For this reason, one frontier considers unsupervised or self-supervised techniques. Let's think back to images for a second. The internet contains tons of labeled photographs. If we want to train a system to recognize a cat, we can download billions of images that humans have annotated as cats, and that can help us along the way. There is far less 3D data on the internet, and it tends not to be annotated. That said, it's pretty easy to collect messy and unlabeled 3D data. For example, we can drive around a city with a 3D sensor and collect gigabytes of 3D outdoor environments, but the difference is that none of the cars in these environments are actually labeled as a car. So self-supervised algorithms ask whether this data is enough to train AI systems. In any event, although we haven't explored the details of modern shape analysis, hopefully you can see the challenges in teaching a computer how to understand geometry. At the very least, we have to deal with representation, modeling, and data collection to make progress. Developments in this area will inspire intelligent systems that can navigate the road safely, bring digital characters to life, and manufacture shapes that fit our individual demands. Thank you.